Good morning. Oh. So again, we want to welcome you to, um, to, 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 to our Good Friday service. Uh, we have, um, for, 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 for those of you who um, are familiar with, uh, with, with worship services, uh, what normally happens is um, the uh, worship team, uh, the, the praise team comes up and, uh, and they lead us in a time of singing and, and then afterwards, um, and then afterwards uh, the, the pastor comes up um, in, a, uh, in a suit and, um, and, 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 and preaches uh, God's word and then there is a time uh, for response. It, it's normally uh, one song and then, um, a, a, and then things are done. And so when you see me up here, uh, no, normally uh, this, or, or, or when you see Reverend Ted, normally this marks uh, the, the, the halfway point. Um, but this is nowhere near the halfway point. Uh, this is like, this is like, you're, you're you're like 10% in. Um, um, this is a time um, today we decided, um, uh, the, the English leadership, uh, we decided that today would be a day where we wanted to uh, give you an opportunity to uh, respond to God. Uh, we want to give you an opportunity to uh, reflect, uh, to, to, to think, to hear, uh, to, to, to hear the word of God, um, and, um, and, and then to pray, not only uh, by yourself, uh, but, um, but, but, but together with God's people. And so um, my job today is um, it, it's just a part of this leading process. Um, this, uh, this, th th this whole uh, morning is going to be um, a pretty much a, a, um, a, a call and response, call and response. Um, so to kind of take you through uh, what, what has just uh, gone on, um, the, uh, the, the, the praise team uh, led us in a time of, uh, of singing of God's uh, goodness and his majesty and his uh, beauty and his glory and his awesomeness. And then, and then afterwards, we had a little bit of time where we um, were uh, singing songs that, if you noticed, um, there there were a lot more um, big words, and uh, and it was a little bit more solemn, and it was um, uh, talking about um, our, our our sin and 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 our. Um, our relationship with God, and and, and then now I'm up here um, to tell you um, that, that that you're a sinner. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to do. Um, if you guys can turn with me to uh, Romans chapter three, uh, this is where we're going to be spending our time today. Uh, it's just um, uh, again, this is going to be. Um, relatively short because this is a part of the guiding process for you to um, for, 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 for you to reflect and for you to um, respond to God and uh, I, I apologize uh, you, you don't have um, a, a bulletin uh, my name is uh, my name is Pastor Kwan uh, for those of you who don't know me uh, we are again just really uh, grateful that you have um, that, that, that you came um, because um, today is Good Friday and um, I, I was reading this book, and they were talking about, and, and in reference to religion, uh, they kept uh, saying that um, religion is, um, is, is a form of escapism. Uh, from the rest of the world, and so and so, a, a lot of people. This is how this is how some people see uh, re religion. Uh, they see uh, the, the the world as the real world, uh, where you live your real life, and then uh, once a week uh, you come into um, a church building and you escape from that, and you sing a few songs, uh, you make yourself feel a little better, and then you go back into the real world. And and I was reading this book, and 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 he was um, describing uh, this uh, paradigm, and um, what the author uh, that, uh, that then said was, but if you really think about it, if you really really think about it, um, that's not true at all. In fact, the 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 world is is escapism, and when you come into the church or you open your Bible, that's that's real life. I mean, if you think of the more uh, fundamental uh, questions that, that, that we have um, uh, uh, about our existence, what are they? Questions like, who am I? Right? What am I here for? Questions like, what happens to me after I die? And, you know, these are, I, I guess for me, um, I, I, I don't know if any of you um, 
echo um, what my soul uh, wants to know. But uh, for, for me, these are, the, these are the important questions. Right? These are the questions that I, that, that, that I want answers to. And, and unfortunately, if I, if I go into the, if, if I step outside, if I close my Bible and I try to find the answers um, outside of um, the Bible, outside of the church, I, I, I don't get an answer. What I get is, um, think about it later. Worry about that later. Do this. Busy yourself in your hobbies. Busy yourself in your activities, in your busyness. And rather than think about these things, why don't we just delay this? And it works. It, it, it works really, really, really well. I, I, I mean, if we're good at anything, um, we're good with being busy. Right? I am, like, I, I'm so good with being busy. Like, and, and, and I can go... I, I can go, I'm a pastor, I can go like a day or two without thinking of, you know, like, who am I, why am I here, and what happens to me after I die. I'm a pastor, right? I think about death and dying. That's like a part of my job. What about you? How often are you confronted with these questions? Oftentimes, not until... Um, tragedy or loss strikes. And I think that there may be some of you who, who, who can echo along with me. I was uh, speaking with a friend and they were just sharing about how um, they, uh, they knew someone who is, um, I, I'm 29, so two years, tw 27. She was 27 and, 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 she, and she passed away just suddenly, right? She got married like five months ago. And then she passed away, just all of a sudden. And her friends and her family are now mourning, and many of them are now dealing with loss. And now many of them are, are wondering, right, what happened to her? Where is she now? What's going on? And so some of you are there, some of you um, know someone, or you yourself are dealing with uh, illness, and so uh, you yourself are faced with uh, your own mortality and, uh, and the fact that you're not going to live forever. And in our more sober moments, we have these questions that, are, um, that, 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 that just bombard our souls. And if, and if you're not there, then at the very least, um, it's, it's Good Friday, and um, it's a religious occasion, and you are, again, moved to uh, think about um, these fundamental questions of our being. Who am I? What am I doing here? What happens to me after I die? And I want to take just a few minutes just to, um, I get, if not tell, then remind us of, uh, of the fact that the Bible uh, not only provides answers for this, but provides glorious answers, amazing answers. And so if you guys uh, have a Bible and if you guys are in Romans 23, uh, 3, uh, all we're going to do is we're going to read a couple of uh, sentences from the Bible and then we are going to um, explain them. And then we're going to respond uh, to them. So uh, Romans uh, 3.23 starts off like this. Wait, is that, is that mine or yours? Okay, so that's, that one's mine. Okay, um, okay. <laughs> that would be bad. Uh, Romans 3 uh, verse 23 uh, reads like this. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, right away in this one sentence, the Bible gives us um, our answers to our questions, or answers to our questions. It might not be your answers, but it is an answer. Who am I? I am a sinner. What does it mean to be a sinner, someone who sins? What is, it, what, what is a sin? A sin, very simply, is just a wrongdoing against God. And so um, to uh, do, wrong, to, to, to do uh, bad things or to not do the good things that you have been asked to do, that those are, uh, let's, let's just keep it simple and let's classify those as sins. And so when, when we're talking about doing, we're also talking about your thought life. Um, and, and so 
um, the things that you have done and thought that are um, that, that, that are bad or wrong or the good that you have not um, done and and I think all of us um, in this room no matter how um, loose our definitions of, of right and wrong are I think we can say that uh, we're, we're, we're not perfect um, and so I, I think all of us would, un, would, would, would accede to the fact that we have at some point in our lives done wrong, thought wrong, or not done as well as we could have or should have. And so the Bible would classify all of us as, uh, as, as um, those who have sinned or sinners. So, who, so who, who are we? One answer is we are a sinner. Uh, why am I here? Um, in the passage it says, uh, we fall short of the glory of God. So um, we were here, we were made, God made us to uh, be in a relationship with him, uh, to worship him, to know him, uh, to bring him glory and honor with our lives. But we have rebelled against that for the most part. And we have done wrong in his sight. And in Romans 6.23, the Bible also says uh, the wages for our sin, the consequences of our wrongdoing is death. And death is not just a, uh, death we're not just talking about a physical death, but we're talking about um, a, a, an eternal, a spiritual death where we will spend the rest of uh, forever in hell. And so right away, one sentence, three answers. Who am I? I am a sinner in the eyes of God. What am I doing here? I was made to worship God, but I've rejected that. And what happens to me when I die? Well, I will, um, if, if that is my identity, then my life, then, then what happens to me after I die is I will spend the rest of eternity in hell. And 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 I hope that and I hope that that's not. Um, I hope that when you read this or when you see this or when you hear this, that you don't think escapism. Right? If if so, then your life is. And I think the good news of the Bible is that, and 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 and, and I'm so grateful that I get to come up and speak. Um, after we sing uh, these realities and these songs, because you know that this is not uh, the end of the story. You know that God doesn't only see us and say, you're sinners, you're going to hell, you know, peace out, that's it. Right? For God so loved us that he sent his uh, one and only son to die on a cross for our sins. If we keep reading in verse 24 and 25, so we have sinned. I put that in parentheses just to, um, j just to summarize uh, the previous sentence and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement through faith in his blood. The Bible tells us that Jesus willingly offered himself, God, to be our sacrifice of atonement. Now, what does that mean? I will explain with an illustration that I have used a lot of times, especially um, with, uh, with high school and junior high students. And so for, for, for those of you who have seen or heard this before, um, I, I apologize. Um, but, but imagine and just, just picture for a second that, that, that your whole life's effort was, um, is, is contained in this bottle of water, all right? And every single time, um, you, 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 you do a good thing. Um, you put a pure water um, into this bottle, all right? And, and every single time you do something bad, uh, you spit into the bottle. And so, um, and so it's like you spit into it, right? And, and, and over the course of your life, uh, what, what you're going to do is you're going to accumulate good things and you're going and, and, and to fill it up with, uh, with, with pure water and then you're going to do uh, some bad things. And so there's going to be spit. And so over the course of your life, um, this is what you will do. You will, uh, you, you, you will fill this bottle. And at the end of your life, when you pass, what you are going to do is you're going to pass this bottle to God. And if God is willing to drink from it, then you get to go to heaven. And if God is not willing to drink, then you go to hell. Now, we have already said that all of us have sinned, all of us have spit in this bottle. 
And so no matter how good we are, no matter what, how, how much good we do, what we're not doing, we're not removing spit. We're just adding water. So we just have a, a cup of spit. And, and we give it to Jesus, and we give it to God, and we say, and we say drink up. And he's going to say, no, you're going down. And, 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 that's, and that's all of our fate. But the good news of the Bible is that beside every one of us is Jesus Christ. And uh, Nate, if you can pass me your bottle. And Jesus stands beside us with his a bottle of pure water because he lived a perfect life without sin. And he's standing beside you and he's saying, and he's saying, do you want mine? And for every person who, while on earth, has uh, believed in God, repented of their sin, and committed to a relationship with Jesus, um, he makes that trade. And so you take his bottle, and then God takes a sip, says, it is good, you are in. But what we have left over is we have this, this cup of spit that Jesus is holding. And God looks at Jesus and says, I will not drink from this. Someone must pay for this. You will pay for this. And so Jesus Christ, on a Friday, 2,000 years ago, paid the penalty for our sin and was our sacrifice and died on a cross for us. That's the gospel. That God so loved you that he came from heaven to earth, lived a perfect life, in order to be an exchange for you so that you would be able to spend eternity with God and that he would have to suffer the penalty for our sins. That's the gospel. Now, we quickly said, that every person who has faith in God uh, will be saved, um, that God will make this exchange with every person who has faith in him. What is faith? Well, faith, biblical faith, is not just a head knowledge. It's not just knowing or understanding that, 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 that Jesus is God. Right? And, um, and, and there's a passage in the Bible that actually speaks very um, vividly into this uh, reality. In uh, James 2.19, uh, to paraphrase it for you, um, God says, you know, even the demons see who I am. Even the demons know who I am, and yet they don't believe, um, and yet they're not saved. And so um, demons have a knowledge of who God is. They know that Jesus died on the cross for them. They believe it because they saw it. They were there. And yet they are not saved because they do not have true faith. What is faith then? Faith is not simply knowing that God is who he says he is, but it is trusting that he is good. It is committing to a relationship with him where you make vows to uh, repent and to leave your former life behind and to to cling to uh, him. Uh, as your Lord and Savior. Uh, and, and so for those of you who are, uh, who, who, who are married or for those of you who are ever thinking of getting married, uh, the, 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 the analogy is very simple. Um, what a Christian, the promises and the vows that a Christian makes to God is akin to uh, the, uh, the vows and the promises that, um, that, that a man and a woman make on their wedding day. Where I say a vow, I promise to, um, to, to, to spend the rest of my life with you, I promise to leave my old life behind and to spend the rest of forever with you or the rest of my forever with you. And, and in the same way, when you're making promises with God, what we are saying is um, we are going to uh, leave behind our uh, spiritual singleness and we are going to uh, leave behind our life of sin. Uh, we are going to commit and promise this 
uh, Jesus. And we're going to spend the rest of our lives making good on this promise uh, to know you, uh, to uh, love you, uh, to serve you. That's the promise. And for every person who makes that promise, uh, you now have answers. Um, you, you now have a new set of answers to these questions. First, first question, who am I? You are no longer a sinner in the eyes of God. You are his child. What am I doing here? Why am I here? I am now here to know God, to love God, and to help others to know and love him. And what happens to me after I die? I will be in heaven forever with Jesus. That is the exchange that is made. There is a change in identity, a change in life purpose, and a change in destination. For all who believe, for all who have repented, who have confessed their sins. Now again, like I said, this is an opportunity. Um, my, 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 my role today is to lead us um, to respond to God. And so, um, and so um, now I would like to lead us in a time of responding to God. Um, on, um, uh, on, uh, on the PowerPoint um, are uh, two Bible passages that I would like to read um, to you. Uh, uh, the first is 1 John 1.19, and the second is James 5.16. We want to offer uh, both uh, those of you who would, um, who, who would say, uh, you know, I don't think I'm a believer. I don't think I believe in Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't call myself a Christian. We want to offer you a time uh, to reflect and to, and, and to respond. Um, and, and we want to offer those of you who would say, yes, I am a Christian. Um, I do believe in Jesus. I have repented of my sins. I have made those wedding vows um, at, at one point in my life. Uh, we want to give you an opportunity to respond as well. Your response is different. So uh, 1 John 1.19 says, uh, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just uh, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And for believers, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And so for those of you who don't, um, who, who don't identify as Christian, but you, um, but, but you were uh, listening to the songs and you were uh, listening to the word of God and you say, you know, yes, I, I am a sinner. I, I, I have offended God with uh, the way that I live my life. Um, I know that he loves me. I know that forgiveness is available for all who confess. If that's you here today, if this is where you are at, then I would like to lead you in a time of um, reflection um, and, and confession. If you go to the next slide, um, um, there, here, here, here is a, uh, a, an outline for, um, for, for a time of reflection where you can talk to God. You can confess your sins knowing that he is um, just and, and faithful um, to forgive. That for, if, uh, for all who say, God, will you forgive me? The answer is yes. And so you can come to him, and in your time of uh, silent confession and, repent, uh, and reflection, um, you can do that today. And you can thank Jesus for dying um, on the cross for you. You can repent of your sins. Repentance is simply uh, just saying, uh, God, you know, I am, uh, I, I, I'm sorry uh, for, uh, for, for living my life apart from you. I'm going to stop living my life apart from you. And I'm going to start, I'm going to make a promise to live um, for you, to live with you. So repentance is simply uh, stopping, turning, and walking in a different direction. And so uh, we are making a promise or a vow. Today would be your wedding day for those of you who um, make this promise, your, um, your, 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 your vow of being with Jesus. And uh, after you uh, make this vow and this commitment, uh, that will be, um, uh, you will be in a relationship with Jesus uh, starting today and culminating um, in heaven. And so that's for those of you who are non-believers. Uh, for, for those of you who are, uh, who, who are non-Christian and you don't feel, uh, you, you know, you say, you know, I'm not here yet. I'm not ready to do this. Uh, you know, this is just not me. You know, I heard this. I, I'm just not there. You know, and, and, that's, and that, um, for, for, for me, um, it is okay. And we would, and, and though I would like you to do this um, very much because um, I, I, I know that God loves you. He wants you to know that he loves you. Uh, for, for, for those of you who are not yet there, that's 
that, that, that's okay. And we ask that you would uh, take the following moments of um, silence uh, to uh, simply reflect on um, on 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 just, uh, your life, your actions, areas where um, you can uh, turn a new leaf, uh, if you will, areas that you would like to leave behind, and areas where you would like to start fresh. Now, I would like to speak uh, to believers. Uh, believers, uh, your word is uh, that if you confess your sins to God, that you will be healed. Healed from what? Healed from the power and uh, the and the grip of sin. So uh, we would like you to take your time to, uh, to take this time to ask God to reveal your sin to you, and as God reveals your sin to you, just confess that up to Him. Just say, God, I am sorry. I'm sorry for having uh, thought these things, done these things, uh, lived this way. God, that, that, was, that, that was wrong, and I'm sorry. God, I promise that I, I will know, I, I, I will do my best to not live in this manner anymore. And then you thank God that he has broken the power of sin in your life. Thank God for the fact that he will take away your desire for sin and that he will give you new desires for him, to know him, to please him, to serve him, to obey him. And then recommit to fleeing uh, your sin and to pursuing a holy life. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to ask that, um, that, that uh, this is an individual exercise, by the way. Uh, so we ask that um, you would uh, uh, take the next uh, two or three minutes to uh, simply uh, reflect, to uh, pray, to talk to God. And uh, in, in a couple of minutes, uh, I am going to close us off in a time of prayer. And then the worship team is going to uh, lead us um, in a time of further um, uh, responding to God. We, um, uh, we, we thank you for, uh, for giving us this time today to uh, remember your goodness and your love and the reality of these um, truths. God, we uh, thank you that you are more real uh, than we could possibly ever imagine. We thank you that your love for us far exceeds anything that we can ever fathom. We thank you that there is forgiveness for sin. We thank you, Jesus, for having died in our place so that we would not have to die or be apart from you, God. 
We thank you for the victory that we have in the cross. That a life of sin is not a life that we um, need to live any longer. That a life apart from you is not a life that we need to live any longer. We thank you for that, for breaking the power of sin. We ask uh, for uh, those of us who have uh, made, uh, who who have uh, repented and who have confessed, oh God, may you bring a healing into our hearts. May you uh, strip away desire uh, for sin or desire to be apart from you. And God, may you increase our desire for you. May you increase our desire to know your name. May we may you increase our desire to sing and to live for you. We uh, pray for this. We pray for our uh, friends uh, who came today who do not know you, Jesus, and we ask uh, for them. We ask that this um, that you would have allowed them to um, have a time of reflection, um, to think of the, the the junk in their life that that, that needs to be gotten rid of. And we ask for those who, um, who, who have recognized that this junk is sin. And we pray for those who have uh, made the commitment to walk away from their sin and to walk uh, with you, Jesus. We pray for them. Asking, O oh God, that you would help them to know deeper your love for them, your goodness towards them. And that you would help them to not walk alone, God. That you would help them to find um, a men and women who will counsel, or walk alongside them. What we ask for all of us, God, is that we would not uh, leave uh, this place unchanged. Oh God, that you would impart um, and impact change upon every one of us to draw us near to you, to draw us farther away from sin, to draw us closer in line with your uh, will and your, um, and, and your uh, purpose uh, for us. And we simply ask, God, that in this time, as we continue to sing, as we continue to uh, rejoice um, and exult in you, O oh God, that you would um, open our eyes more and more to your uh, love for us, um, what you have done for us, and may you even now respond, uh, uh, cause us to respond. And if it not now, then, then 15 minutes and 20 minutes in one hour. Oh God, continue to impart change, we ask, in our lives. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Let's stand.